Hey guys, Lori from Premier back again with more retail selling tips you can use in your salon. And today I'm talking about refreshing your retail. So take a look around your salon right now, or if you're not there, kind of visualize. And have you moved things around in your salon in the last six weeks? If the answer is no, you are due, my friend. So I want to talk to you today about some tips on how you can do that easily without having to rack your brain on where you should be moving this stuff. But here it is. The psychology of a shopper is that we just always want to see something new. We want to be in the know about what's hot, what's going on, what's trending, right? So this is true about any department store that you're going into. They're always changing their displays. And the reason for that is because they want to make sure that the customer's always enticed. So you, for the salon owner, should be doing the exact same thing. So I know that retail is not always in the forefront, but it really should be. So I want you to set a reminder on your phone. And every six to eight weeks, now this is giving, given that you're a color salon or something like that, um, you should be tweaking things, okay? Um, and the reason I say that is, that's your cycle for seeing repeat business from your same clients over and over usually. So you can kind of figure out your average, what works for your salon and how often your, your clients are generally seeing you or coming into the salon space. But I'm just assuming hair color appointments six to eight weeks, so that's why I'm saying six, right? So every time I, as Lori the color client, walks into your salon space, I should see something new that I did not see last time that I came in. And this is how you can do this without racking your brain. So there's, obviously, you've got four displays that I'm gonna talk about today. So one is your shelf display. So that is where your product generally lives. Your hair products are there, they look great, you've got them merchandised, you're keeping them clean. Awesome. But sometimes your shelf displays can appear a little bit two dimensional, right? They're just a little flat and they kind of start fading into the background if you don't kind of um, have something else to expect, right? It just kind of looks like part of the wall now. You know, I've walked in, I've seen it so many times, I don't even notice it anymore. So now you can utilize these other three types of displays to kind of create that always sense of movement. So what the first one is going to be a feature display table. It can also be a freestanding display unit. Just anything that's freestanding and more in your face as soon as you walk into the salon. So I recommend these in the entryway of your salon, like right in the foyer as soon as they come in. You can even put these, very as long as they fit, um, into your salon floor. The actual cutting floor you can have in the dead center there, as long as you've got space, uh, feature display. It's awesome. I've seen it work great. Um, the other one is going to be point of purchase display. So this is going to be a much smaller display that sits right where your customers check out. So whether that's an actual front desk with a front desk worker who checks people out, um, it could be a podium or wherever you normally keep your, you know, your square that you guys are using to check people out, wherever that takes place, there should be a little bit of an impulse item section there, usually smaller, much smaller than your feature display, but still changing out very regularly. The last one is going to be called the sale area. That's fancy name, right? But this is where you're going to bring things to mark them down. And I'll explain a little bit better. So we've got our shelf display, our feature display, usually a table in salon, our point of purchase display, which is our smaller impulse items, and our sale display for marking down those impulse items as we move through them seasonally. So that is my tip for you today. This is how you can keep your, your area super exciting and super fresh for people, and that way they're always wanting to shop when they're waiting for their next appointment. Here we go. Feature displays. This is how you set this up. Your table, first of all, should be about, mm, I'm gonna say hip height, about uh, waist height for people. Um, average height, of course. So that way when your product sits on that table, it's going to be about grab level or about eye level for your customer. Your feature display should feature anything that is new, seasonal, on sale, or something that you've got something, uh, maybe a combo or a bundle that you're putting together. I always recommend having a sign on your feature display table and props. There's another trick to this, which is called adding height. And height, it can be done by either putting your largest products in the center with your little ones on the outside. Usually we call it the pyramid effect in merchandising. Um, or you can do it by, say you've got bottles that are all about the same size. You can do it by actually adding risers or something for height on the table. Risers can be actual acrylic risers you buy from the store, like Google it online, acrylic risers for merchandising. Or they can be something simple, like a crate or a basket or a barrel or something that adds height to the table. And then you just sit the products on that to create the sense of levels, okay? The center doesn't always have to be here. You can have pyramids that kind of go off here, but definitely to add visual interest, you always wanna have height. Um, props are also very important. So a little hidden secret about retail is most large big box stores that do visual merchandising like your Nordstrom's, your Saks, your Von Mars, those big fancy stores that you love to go into, they have what we call a prop room. There's a visual merchandising room that actually sits 
somewhere hidden in the storage areas back there, and they've got props that they've been using for years, and they recycle these props over and over again, depending on the promotion that's going on. And that's what you should do too. It saves you money. You don't have to continue to buy props year after year, but if you've got your summer props and your spring props and your fall props and you know those types of things, you can bring those out and kind of always move and shake, right? So that is a big tip too. Props are great to add like a mood or a feeling to the table, and it really makes people want to stop and look. So I highly recommend that. Signage on tables should always be represented professionally. So make sure you're putting signage in either an acrylic display holder or a picture frame that works for you. And also just like the props, you can recycle signs year after year. So I recommend if you're going to get professionally printed signs, make them semi-generic so that you can use them again. Next, point of purchase display. There's a lot of great ways to display point of purchase items, which I call impulse items. I didn't invent the term, but that's what they call. Impulse items are usually meant for someone who's already about to buy something in your store, or already about to check out, and they're those last minute add-ons where they're looking at it like, hmm, I didn't walk in here thinking I needed a new hair tie today, but that looks really cute, so I'm gonna get one. So hair ties are awesome for impulse items in a salon. Um, lash serums, mascaras, makeup, skincare, um, Sample items, travel sizes, those are huge. So impulse items should be always featured, like I said, at the point of purchase, which is where your customer buys. Um, so think about TJ Maxx, you go to buy, you've got your arm full of clothes at TJ, right? And you go and you've gotta go through this crazy you know, point of purchase um, impulse item area before you can get to the register. So this is science, people. These people know what they're doing and you should be using this in your salon too. So impulse items can be anything. So you need to take a look at what's available to you in salon. And things like, you know, at Premier, we've got gummies, right? So we've got the hair ties, the little um, stretchy hair ties that you can use. There's a lot of really cool ways to display stuff like this. So one is my favorite, which is the dump bin, which sounds awesome, right? It sounds really classy, but the dump bin is basically either a uh, glass jar or a bin or a basket or a crate, and you've got literally products dumped in there and people get to rifle through and have that experience of finding their favorite. I love these in a glass jar personally for me because I think for one, it's classy. It makes the decor look really nice, but also you can see through it so your customer can see exactly what shades of hair ties are in there if hair ties in this example is what you're using. Other things you can take a look at are clip strips. So clip strips are a great way to actually clip onto your podium and have a strip of attachable hooks that you can hook things onto. I love clip strips for hair bows or hair ties or clips or earrings, um, jewelry, things like that. So they, it aligns all of your product in a beautiful line formation and people can pull those off. Um, a lot of retailers actually use these, um, I'm thinking of grocery stores mainly, you'll use these a lot in grocery stores because you'll have your big cereal aisle and then there's something usually attached there. It takes a two dimensional boring shelving unit and kind of pops some stuff out at your face so it makes you want to look. So that is a clip strip, take a, a minute to Google that. So your last thing is your sale area. So what do you put on sale? All right, so this is where the verbiage gets a little strange. So I don't necessarily mean your sale. So for example, in August, we're running a leader sale. If you run a leader sale in your salon, don't put this in your sale area. That should be in your front feature display table. The sale area is for items that you're phasing out, like your uh, markdowns, okay? So think of trend trendy seasonal items. Maybe you brought in some really cool 4th of July looking hair bows, and they were kind of trendy red, white, and blue. And now 4th of July is phasing out and now we want to get rid of those items, but we don't want to completely lose them from our, from our inventory. So we put them in a sale area, and that way the customer can actually go buy them at a clearance. clearance. You can continue to mark them down. Then you're at the same time as you have these marking down, you're bringing in the next season of hair bows and the next trend. And you continue to bring things in to mark them down. And it's a tactic that retailers use all the time. You're always flowing into markdown items, and what's new and what's fresh. So you can play with that in your salon, and if you need help with that, definitely do um, ask. But I recommend a sale or a markdown area actually kind of in your hidden corners of your salon. You don't want your sale items to be right up front. You want your sale items to kind of be in that corner. Think about if you walk into um, Air Apostle or something like that, you're gonna find the sale rack way in the back, right? In the area that no one tends to go. Your full price promotional items should be right in the customer's face, your sale markdown should be hidden in your little nooks and crannies in your salon at the, you know, maybe the bottom shelf somewhere, something like that. So those are things you can play with to make sure your retail is always looking fresh. But like I said, get on a routine, set a reminder on your phone every six to eight weeks minimum to be changing that up for your customers and see your sales grow. Love it. Talk to you guys soon.